Today we're talking about parallel converses, and this has to do with this whole transversal business we've been working on. And parallel converses are really just taking the facts we've already learned and arguing them in a different direction. For example, you have already learned that if two lines are parallel and they're cut by this other line, this transversal, then what's called the corresponding angles, like these two, are going to be the same angle, have the same measure. Well, all that the converse does is argue that in the other direction. So what that says is if you have two lines cut by a transversal and these two angles are the same, that proves that these two lines are parallel. So that is the corresponding angles converse. It's got a big name, but it's really a pretty simple uh, thing. You have also the alternate interior angles converse. So we could take this angle and this angle, and if they're the same, that proves these two lines are parallel. And then there's something a little bit different. There's the uh, consecutive interior angles converse. So let's say we took this angle and this angle. And what that one says is if this angle and this angle, consecutive interior angles, add up to 180 if they're supplementary, that proves that these two lines are parallel. And then there's also the exterior, uh, the alternate exterior angles converse. So let's say this angle and this angle, if those two are the same, that also proves that these two lines are parallel. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about converses. Let's uh, look at a couple of problems. So this uh, complicated figure, we've actually got um, a couple of sets of lines here. It says, which pair of lines are parallel if angle one is congruent to angle three, meaning they have the same measure? So here's angle one right here. Here's angle three right here. And what I would say in a complicated figure like this is that you want to pay attention to which lines are involved. So definitely this line is involved to make those angles. And then so are these two. So you can kind of ignore this bottom line and not worry about it. So we know B is not going to be our, in our answer. And when you've got it narrowed down that way, it becomes clear that A is your transversal and these two lines, C and D, are your parallel lines and these are the corresponding angles. So we would say C and D. All right, let's look at another one. So this looks a little complicated at first, but it's not, it's not too hard. Which, if any, lines can be proven parallel provided the following diagram? And we see this line here, and then we've got a couple of lines here, and then also these sort of little legs sticking down, these rays coming out um, from the intersection. So I, I guess the only, um, you know, what strikes me as first is these two lines might be parallel and this could be the transversal, but how do we prove that? Well, we've got 70 up here and then we've got 35 and 75 down here. If I put these two together, then I'll, I can kind of ignore this little guy, this little ray sticking out here, and 35 and 75 is 110. I know that this will make up a linear pair, so 110 plus 70 would be uh, that one, and aha, now what I've got is corresponding angles. So it looks like A and C are parallel. That would be the corresponding angle converse to prove that. All right, let's look at one more. All right, this one says, which, if any lines, can be proven parallel provided the following diagram? for each conclusion provide a justification. So this time we have to decide what's parallel and then pick a converse that explains why. Well, we've got a little bit of information. We, we've got A, B, and C, which all look like they might be parallel. And then we've got D, which is obviously the transversal cutting through here. And then we've got a couple of angles, 146 and 34. What I notice is that these guys are consecutive interior angles if D's are transversal and B and C would be the parallel lines. If B and C are parallel, they should add up to 180. So 146 plus 34, well, that is 180. So it looks like B and C are parallel and it's the consecutive interior angles converse that proves it. So let's see if we can find one like that. We're looking for B and C B and C, consecutive interior angles converse, there it is, and that is our answer.